Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Andy Pollard. I'm the Senior EPA Delivery Manager within the EPA Delivery Team here at Pearson. Thank you all for attending the support techniques to be EPA ready. As we'll go through the slides today, please, if you've got any questions, use your chat box, which should be located on your control panel on the right hand side. And throughout different sort of points of this presentation, we'll be pausing to answer any questions uh, which come in. Because this presentation is aimed at new customers and existing customers, there may be some parts where um, we will discuss EPA process. For existing customers, this will be communicated out to you through previous webinars and also through your business development managers. Okay, you will get a copy of the slides early on uh, next week. And like I said earlier, there will be a recorded version available on the website, again, towards the, towards the early, early next week. So if we just make a start. So what we're going to go through today is looking at how ready are you? And in terms of EPA readiness, we've got different stages and we're going to be looking at the specification and the additional resources documents. And in particular, we'll be focusing on key aspects, which will not only support you as an endpoint assessment uh, provider, but also ensuring that your apprentices are well equipped and fully understand the requirements of endpoint assessment, how the components will be assessed. I will also be touching on how independent endpoint assessors use the same documents, the same guides to make safe, uh, valid assessment decisions. We're also going to touch on work-based evidence, as in the majority of endpoint assessments, work-based evidence is a requirement. And we're just going to unpick that a little bit more and direct you to key pages within uh, specific specifications to make sure that you are as comfortable and confident in advising your apprentices, but also apprentices are fully aware of the expectation of work-based evidence and how to make sure that it's uh, used effectively in that assessment period. And then finally, we're gonna to touch on some delivery guidance, again, to support you in your uh, conversations with apprentices and again making sure that apprentices feel ready and they're fully aware of the expectation so if you're a new customer to pearson many customers focus on the assessment plan and the assessment plan is a public document which is available on the Institute for Apprenticeships website. It will detail everything that is required in terms of knowledge, skills and behaviours which will be assessed within EPA. If you are not a, 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 if you are not a contracted customer with Pearson, you will only have access to the slimline specification and we'll touch on that in, one, in a later slide. It's important to know that each endpoint assessment organisation will have their own specification and their own delivery instructions and their own evidence requirements. If you're a new customer and you have uh, been looking at other endpoint assessment organisation specifications, their approach may be different to Pearson's approach. When we look at the two documents, the specification is a slimline version of the assessment plan and it details what, what will be assessed, the timings of the assessment components, the reassessment rules, and it will give direction to specific policies and procedures. For example, if an apprentice requires an additional learning uh, need. When we look at the additional resources document, this will only be shared once a contract is in place with Pearson to uh, undertake endpoint assessment activities. It's the additional resources document 
which breaks down each endpoint assessment component into specific assessment criteria or standard areas, standard outcomes, but it also includes the evidence requirements which apprentices will be assessed against. When we look at both documents, the specification and the additional resources, both documents should be reviewed hand in hand. So what, what I mean by that is the specification will provide information on grading, but then the additional resources will explore that in a lot more detail. When we look at the assessment plan, the assessment plan does detail the knowledge, skills and behaviours, but our specification and additional resources document actually brings that assessment plan to life. When we're looking at these, these two documents, it can be used for planning purposes, so supporting the apprentices from day one to be EPA ready. When we talk about service level agreements, with regards to the service level agreements, we have key stages with regards to gateway sign off, allocation and scheduling of endpoint assessments and results. As an overview, once you once a centre has uploaded the apprentice's gateway evidence, independent endpoint assessors then have a three day turnaround to review and accept that evidence. Once gateway evidence is accepted, the assessor will then be in touch with either yourself as the centre or be in touch with the employer to start scheduling and arranging endpoint assessment dates. The service level agreement around the scheduling and booking of assessments is between six to eight weeks once gateway has been signed off. Once the apprentice has been assessed, Assess, uh, independent endpoint assessors then have five working days to complete their assessment activities, share their assessment decision with their internal quality assurer, and then on day five, release the results using the ACE 360 system. For further information on service level agreements, please do check the Pearson website for a previous uh, webinar entitled Ch EPA, Ch EPA Process Changes. For existing EPA customers, you will be aware of what our uh, offer is with regards to endpoint assessment. You will be allocated a business development manager who should be your first point of contact for any um, existing questions, queries, uh, clarifications. Your business development manager is fully aware of the endpoint assessment process. They're fully aware of Supporting, um, supporting you through ACE 360, providing guidance on allocations, scheduling. They will also be there to support with any um, interim questions. So for example, if an apprentice is due to reach gateway and for uh, an unexpected reason cannot progress through gateway, business development managers will be able to support you and support your apprentice. Once the apprentice has reached gateway point, that is when the responsibility falls to the endpoint assessment delivery team, so the EPA delivery team within Pearson. As an existing customer, you may have more technical questions from reviewing the specification and the additional resources. We do have a hierarchy within EPA Deliverer, which consists of your independent endpoint assessor, the independent endpoint assessors internal quality assurer and we've also got lead internal quality assurers if you have got any technical questions please do feed these through to epa delivery at pearson.com and then we will then organize the lead internal quality assurer for your e for that epa standard to make contact and provide guidance it's important to note that the lead internal quality assurer will not be able to provide guidance or developmental feedback on evidence which is submitted for gateway. Only your independent endpoint assessor can make that assessment decision as part of that apprentice's endpoint assessment.
When we consider the differences over why one endpoint assessment standard is assessed differently to another endpoint assessment standard, this will be due to the assessment plan uh, identifying different uh, approaches or different methods. If we just pause here for a moment, just to see if we've got any questions with regards to new customers or existing customers, which can be addressed at the moment. So if I just hand over to Claire for a second, just to see if anything has come in. We've got no questions at the moment. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll explore the specification and the additional resources. So as I touched on earlier on, the specification provides guidance on what the endpoint assessment standard is. Within the, spe the specification, that is available to view on uh, Pearson's website. Following review of the specification, it will give guidance on timings of assessment components. It will also provide detail on grading, um, if there are any particular weightings attached to individual components. And it is, it is a really useful document to start engaging with apprentices who are starting on program to get them to understand this is what it, this is what will happen at the end of their learning journey. The additional resources is where the real detail is. This is where each of the assessment components is broken down. And like I mentioned earlier on, there will be uh, specific evidence requirements for particular assessment components. When we look at evidence requirements, the evidence requirements will always be structured in a way which states the apprentice must or could include work-based evidence such as, and we'll touch on that in the work-based evidence section. It's important to note that the evidence requirements are set to ensure that fair assessment occurs across all, all apprentices, regardless of assessments being undertaken in different geographical regions. The independent endpoint assessor and internal quality assurer will be reviewing the assessment decisions made against the evidence requirements stated in the additional resources. So the additional resources document that you as a centre, the apprentice has, the employer has, it is exactly the same document which assessors will make their assessment decisions against. Where endpoint assessments um, have specific requirements with regards to briefs, so for example, in the team leader standard, there is a professional discussion brief. The additional resources document will stipulate what that component is, is all about. It will state the expectation of the apprentice it will state um, specific work-based evidence that could be brought into the professional discussion component. It will also advise on the structure and also the emphasis of that assessment process. It's important to note that when providing evidence for a particular component, review the additional guidance document and the evidence requirements because there are often opportunities for overlap where one piece of evidence could be applied to a range of criteria. With that said, it's important that if you are looking at holistic evidence, making sure that the assessment criteria, the evidence requirements can be fully met by the apprentice. It's important to note that with regards to evidence, making sure that there is a range of evidence items, for example, reflections, observations, witness testimonies, work products if required. The spec and the additional resources document 
can be provided to apprentices to support them in the preparation for EPA. At the start of learning, apprentices, um, if there is a mandated regula uh, regulator qualification required as part of the on-programme learning, start feeding in the additional resources uh, document early on. So then the apprentice can then start making links to their own programme learning journey and how it will support them in their endpoint assessment. Where apprentices have achieved um, high scores, for example, distinctions, the correlation between learning on day one and being aware of what endpoint assessment is, it's highlighted that the early upfront support and guidance has had a beneficial impact at EPA stage. Just to explore the evidence requirements a little bit further, this slide is related to the team leader and is an extract from the additional resources section. We can see that it's related to skills area three, which is building relationships. And if we go from left to right with the columns, the apprenticeship standard outcome is to build trust with and across the team, use effective negotiation and influencing skills and managing any conflicts. And the criteria which the uh, apprentice will be assessed against will be the apprentice can manage conflict to reach an agreed resolution in a positive and timely manner. So for the apprentice to achieve this assessment criteria, when we're looking in the evidence requirements section on the far right, the first paragraph is, apprentices must provide suitable work-based evidence that demonstrates their ability to manage to reach an agreed resolution in a positive and timely manner. Their evidence may relate to a situation where they have to, where they have to manage a conflict within their team between their team and another team or with an external stakeholder. The evidence for this may be based on simulation if there were no naturally occurring opportunities for the apprentice to manage a conflict situation. It is expected that the source of evidence for this assessment criterion will either be a reflective account or professional discussion record supported by either witness testimony from the line manager or work products if work based. So within that evidence requirements, we've got three distinct sections. The first one is clearly detailing what the apprentice must provide as suitable work-based evidence, with a focus on how the apprentice has demonstrated their ability to manage an agreed resolution in a positive and timely manner. The second paragraph gives guidance in relation to situations which the apprentice may um, use as part of their, uh, their evidence. And then the last section is all about the expected source of evidence for this assessment criterion. When we look at another section, so this section is the operations departmental manager level five, there is assessment criteria where there are no evidence requirements. So competency six, building relationships. Within the competency-based interview, there will be the apprentice will be asked questions related to seven competency areas. And if we just focus on competency six, building relationships, assessment criteria 18 or question 18 as we're calling it. The apprentice's response shows the ability to competently apply recognised approaches. Within that, including approaches for influencing and networking when managing partner, stakeholder and supplier relationships in an agile and inclusive manner and sharing good practice. Now, because the component is a competency-based interview, there will be no evidence requirements for the reason apprentices may just focus on the evidence requirements and use that as their evidence. However, if there are no evidence requirements, 
you can always refer to earlier pages within the additional resources document as this will give some content and some uh, exemplification around the key areas of that criteria. For example, the recognised approaches, if you were to refer back to the earlier pages within the additional resources, there will be guidance on what recognised approaches are. Similarly, there will be further exemplification on what is meant by agile and inclusive manner. And there will also be exemplification on sharing good practice. Now to best support apprentices through competency-based interviews, for example, formative mock assessments are required. As a centre, as an assessor team, a good example could be during standardisation sessions, looking at the assessment criteria and building a bank of mock EPA questions. But it's important to remember when building the, the bank of questions, that the questions directly correlate to the assessment criteria and specification. One other consideration is making sure that the, the question is set at the correct level. So for example, Ops Manager EPA is at level five. So the question needs to allow the apprentice to provide a response, which is equivalent to a level five standard. Similarly, if we were talking about the team leader, team leader is at level three. If, you, if the assessor team were to use the same approach, build a bank of uh, questions ready for supporting apprentices through EPA, look at the assessment criteria, focus the question around the criterion and ensure that the apprentice has got opportunity to respond at a level three standard. Okay, has anybody got any questions that relate to the additional resources and key sort of key aspects which will help support apprentices going forward? There's no questions. Okay, thanks, Claire. So when we move into work-based evidence, work-based evidence is any type of document or any, anything which confirms that the apprentice has demonstrated a particular skill or behaviour. When we think about work-based evidence, typical, typical examples can include observation records, witness testimony records, work products and reflective accounts. If we consider the evidence requirements we've just seen, for, for example, the team leader, where it states typical evidence should include, independent endpoint assessors will be using that guidance to support their assessment decision making process. When we look at observation records and witness testimony records, it's important that there's sufficient detail in there to enable the independent endpoint assessor to understand what that apprentice has done in that particular example or that context. When we look at work products, particularly at the higher levels of endpoint assessment, it's critical that there is a clear authentication process to to inform the independent endpoint assessor how the assess how the apprentice has produced a document for example a work product could be the completion of a new policy and procedure however if the policy and procedure was to be submitted as part of the work-based evidence consideration needs to be made on how would that independent endpoint assessor know that that policy was created by that apprentice 
one area to consider is the authentication of evidence. And with more um, electronic portfolios being used, authentication can be um, confirmation from the apprentice once they've uploaded evidence. But similarly, with paper-based evidence being scanned and uploaded, authentication needs to be key. It needs to be clear that the evidence is that of the apprentice and looking at witness testimonies, is it clear who the witness is? What is the status of that witness? Is it the apprentice's direct manager? Is it a colleague that has been working very closely with the witness? So just something to consider when apprentices are generating evidence, particularly for work-based evidence purposes. You may see in, in our additional resources, words which relate to must, should and could. Wherever we see the word must, the apprentice must provide that evidence. If the apprentice chooses not to, then the evidence requirement has not been fulfilled and therefore the assessment criteria cannot be awarded. Where in the evidence requirements you see the word should, there is an emphasis that the apprentice should provide it. So therefore, if an apprentice should provide an observation record to confirm application of a particular skill, again, independent endpoint assessors will be using the word in, in the evidence requirement to ensure that the assessment criteria can be fully met. When we look at could, this is where the apprentice may or may not include that work-based evidence. However, we are giving an example where apprentices could include. I touched on this earlier on with regards to holistic assessment and making sure that apprentices are confident in the evidence that they've, been, uh, that they've produced for that assessment component. When we look at holistic assessment, it's important that apprentices fully understand the requirements of the assessment criteria or of the standard areas which will be assessed. What we don't need to see is one piece of evidence per assessment criteria. However, if an apprentice has um, dealt with a complex situation, the apprentice could focus on the complex situation and then using the evidence requirements in the additional resources document, identify where they've demonstrated different assessment criteria. Where appropriate, apprentices may choose to have three, maybe four key sort of examples and then map against the different assessment criteria and attach maybe the same criteria to two pieces of evidence to demonstrate sufficiency. Where this is not required, if the apprentice feels confident and comfortable, they can annotate their evidence and then when they bring it into the component where the, where the assessment component allows this, it just helps them identify uh, through question and answer particular examples to therefore meet the assessment criteria. Okay, has anybody got any questions on work-based evidence? <coughs> There's no questions. Okay, so then the last section is around the delivery instructions. Within the additional resources document, at the start of each component, there will be delivery instructions or delivery guidance notes. And the purpose of this is to inform you as the centre the apprentice and even the employer about what the what the endpoint assessment component will will entail. 
So on the slide, what we've got on the screen, the project presentation slash question and answer, this one, this has been taken from the operations departmental manager standard. In this component, within the additional resources, it provides detail on the apprenticeship, uh, the apprentice's brief document. So it will provide guidance on carrying out the project, preparing the presentation, the conduct of the assessment, including the assessment criteria that the apprentice's presentation and question and answer responses will be assessed against. The information within the additional resources can be used to support the mock assessments when when the apprentice is becoming ready for endpoint assessment. Within the detail, it will also clarify whether there are evidence requirements that need to be met. And again, you could use that as a benchmark to ensure that the apprentice is ready for endpoint assessment, that they have got all the relevant knowledge, skills and behaviours ready to um, have the final assessment at the end of their apprenticeship programme. As another example, there will be detail on how the apprentices to carry out their project. Where there are sort of references to other areas of the, of the additional resources document, you will all see these in italics. So on the fourth line down, you'll be able to see that there is a reference to project presentation evidence requirements. So again, we're directing apprentices and yourselves as centres to understand what will be assessed within that component. Each of the additional resources documents are set up in exactly the same way with regards to the individual component, there will be an introduction, there will be um, guidance on, on delivery. So that's from your perspective, how, how are we going to best support the apprentices going forward? But also it unpicks a lot of what the apprentice is likely to expect during the endpoint assessment process. And then that brings us to the end of the presentation. Has anybody got 